the way that you list your name, address, and phone number on Google needs to be the same as on any other place that you're listing. Google's like the main hub, and then every other piece needs to match. Because when we play things from Google's perspective, Google will look out and be like, oh, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same, everywhere that you look. And When they start to see that you're playing with (laughs) all of their toys, they're like, that is a business that I can really get behind. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple, proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers, and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. So I have a guest expert in here today to talk to us about one of what I'm going to say is the biggest and best free marketing tools you can have. What if I told you that you could have a giant billboard, like a humongous billboard that everybody in town could see for free? What if I told you that we were going to send out flyers to everybody in your whole county for free? What if I told you that we're going to have somebody go door to door and show people on a map how to find your specific shop? Well, my friends, if we could do all of that for free, you'd all be jumping all up and down and you'd be so excited, right? You can do all of that with one simple tool. There's one thing that I think all retailers need in their toolbox, in their marketing Uh, marketing plan and their marketing strategy. And that is having a Google My Business account. I almost think that's a non-negotiable at this stage of running a business. You need to have a Google My Business account because my friends, everybody Googles, not everybody's on social media, not everybody is, you know, on all the things that you're spending all your time doing but almost everybody is on Google. So if people have those phones in their hands and they're driving around and they're looking for your products, they're looking for stores like yours, or maybe they're not even looking for you, but they see you on the map and they're like, hey, haven't you done that before yourself? I have, I certainly have. So this is why I've invited Chris Hickel from Never Alone Business Services to come in and talk to us today about implementing our Google My Business account to the very best of our knowledge. I have actually asked Chris to come in and he's done a full masterclass. We did a full masterclass inside my retailer's inner circle on how to best optimize. He's given us a checklist and a full class on on the every topic and everything that we needed to do to optimize. And it's so important to me that you have the right information about Google My Business, that I asked Chris to come on the podcast here and give my listeners a taste of Google My Business and his top tips. So today, Chris Hickel from Never Alone Business Services is going to um, give us his um, top four I think three or four (laughs) tips and strategies and share with us, you know, the best way to get started with Google My Business. And even if, listen up, my friends, pay attention. Listen to me. Are you listening to me now? (laughs) Even if you already have a Google My Business and you're thinking you don't need to listen to this, I want you to listen to this podcast (laughs) because... You know, I, I, every retailer that, um, that I know, almost every retailer that I know that has listened, uh, to Chris's advice in our inner circle went, Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that I've had Chris in my mastermind group and we had a deep dive conversation in there. And I, again, had him in my master or in my retailers inner circle group to share that's that important, my friends. So I want you to pay attention and listen to the tips and the strategies that uh, Chris is going to share with us today, because they're important. It's important that your Google My Business, although it is free, it's a really important tool. And if you do it right, and you have the right things in the right place and the right time in that Google, and it's not as 
complicated as social media sometimes feels. This is something that um, you can do once and keep mo keep it modified. So I really want you to pay attention to the four strategies and tips that Chris shares with us today. They're really, really good. So listen up, buckle up and take notes today if you're driving or painting or working or whatever, you know, um, hopefully that you can play replay and all of the information and these tips are in our show notes. So you can always get them there at wendybatten.com slash podcast. You'll always be able to find the show notes. So let's go and listen to Chris Hickel today and my conversation with him about the importance of doing Google My Business correctly so that you can be found by all the people in your town. It'll be like a giant billboard for you. Thank you, Chris, for being here today. Yeah, I'm excited to be here and to uh, talk to uh, all of your listeners. So I have invited Chris on here today. Um, first of all, I've had Chris in um, my mastermind group. I have, have had you come in and chat with us in the mastermind group in the Level Up Mastermind. And uh, Chris has done a masterclass inside the Retailers Inner Circle because this is such an important topic and I invited you in here. We're going to talk about Google My Business and a few other little things here about business, but it's such a it's such a big topic, Google My Business. And it's also really important um, to understand the difference between um, brick and mortar. We're like <laughs> local businesses um, trying to attract people with our Google My Business and um, you are an expert in that. You have brick and mortar and you're excellent with Google My Business. So thank you. Thank you for coming here and chatting with us today. So I want to tell us a little bit about your business and tell us a little bit about yourself and your business journey. Alon, what, what brings you to a Google My Business expert okay, <laughs> position? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, our business journey started about 25 years ago. Uh, my wife was teaching piano lessons in her parents' family room to try to pay for college and to do everything with that. And uh, it got to the point where she was full and started hiring teachers. And then we were trying to figure out how to do all the billing and all that kind of stuff. And so we started a long time ago um, with that. And then Back in 2011, it was time to really take our business to the next level. We had grown slowly and steadily um, throughout, um, you know, th those first uh, 15 years, but not really mu very much. We, you know, online wasn't a big thing before there and uh, figuring all that stuff out was more and more difficult. Um, and in 2011, we started to get really serious with growing our business. And so just started really focusing on online marketing and getting all of that stuff figured out. And then uh, in 2013, we grew to the point where I could quit my job and work uh, full-time with on the music school. And then we realized there's not a lot enough work for two of us to work full-time uh, on our music school. And so um, I'm not a musician. And so we um, really figured out that most musicians and music schools didn't understand the online marketing stuff because it's just not their skill set. It's nothing wrong with them or anything. It's just not who they were. And it was more who I was. I'm a nerd. I, I'm fully willing to admit it. I'm a geek when it comes to all this technology stuff. And so I'm okay admitting that, um, you know, it's, it's more in my wheelhouse. And so we really started helping out a lot of music schools, figuring out their online marketing and helping them with their website and with Google ads and with a little bit of Facebook marketing and their reputation management and all that kind of stuff that takes time, takes energy, takes some skill, takes some knowledge. And most people just didn't want to spend their time doing that. They wanted to do what their business did. They weren't, they, you know, they were great teachers. They were good administrators. They were good uh, appliance repair people, whoever it was that we were helping. And so we wanted to, um, take that burden of the online marketing off of their plate. And so then um, starting about 2013, we started growing Never Alone Business Services and have been building websites and doing online marketing for people ever since. And then in the, it's been the past uh, probably three or four years that we've really dove into Google My Business as Google has done all of their changes with um, what Google My Business started out as, as Google Places and then Google Plus and then now Google My Business. Um, as they've really wrapped their heads around what they wanted it to look like, we've really started doing the same thing on our end as well. 
Yeah, it's like great. That's so one thing. So I have had I had the pleasure of uh, meeting and being in a few groups with Jen. So your wife Jen, who runs the business with you, um, but you're the self confessed nerd <laughs> nerd, <laughs> yeah. nerd guy. So yeah. it's funny because I did reach out to Jen. I know that you guys do this Never Alone Business Services, um, and of course we'll have um, all your links because it's so valuable. It's such a valuable thing for retailers to realize that we can't do everything. Right. So I'm a big proponent of who, not how, like we don't have to figure out all the things, but we have to, we have to be responsible for all the things. There's so many things, like you just said, all the online marketing, all the things, you know, we we have superpowers, all of us in certain parts of our business. Um, You regularly hear me on this program say, you know, we have to have the CEO role filled, which does involve hiring the who's and we have to have, I always say the front of house and all of the fun stuff, but we have to really make sure that um, we're getting people in our business. So how are we doing that? We're doing that with marketing. Well, how are we marketing? There's a million different ways to market. We all know that there's a million different things that we can do. Right. But there's a few things that are essential, in my opinion, um, in running and being well known and, and, and getting things done, sort of the checklist, the things that we have to be involved with. So uh, although there are millions of ways to market, these essential things need to be done. And I, I love how you guys work, um, to be honest. And again, Google My Business gets kind of a bad rap or not a rap. I don't know if that's the rap, but it's almost like it's not sexy or fun. <laughs> It's, it's not it's, like it's not because it's not something that you can really make your own. You have to right. just fit your information into their platform, but it's so vital. And, but I think that's why a lot of businesses end up just poo pooing it and pushing it off to the side and like, well, I have yes. a Google, my business listing it's there, but you know, I, do I really need to spend time on it? Do I need to really spend any energy with it? Um, right. And the answer is yes, absolutely you do. Um, it doesn't have to take up a lot of your time, but it absolutely needs to be something that you um, take advantage of. Google's giving it to us. They're right. providing yeah. this platform. It is free. You know, obviously uh, you can pay people to help you out with it, but it is a free service that Google provides to us and allows Um, all of us to have a potential listing on page one, no matter what your competition ends up being. So it's a really great, great resource. And we really push um, all of our uh, clients to um, have a Google My Business listing and making sure that it's completely optimized. Right. So, so let's, let's talk about that, it, it being essential and why. So, you know, you just explained why it's essential. So one thing that sticks out, um, again, people like poo poo it. And don't, it's really, it's true, right? Like we just kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'm listed in Google and then let's go do Facebook, and Instagram and fun things. Right. Yeah. So I think, um, and I, I actually heard you say this, you know, talking about, um, and just sort of explaining it on like, broad terms, why it's essential. Everybody Googles, but not everybody's on Facebook. Not everybody's on Instagram. Everybody has a smartphone in their hand and needs a map to get to your place or it wants to pop up. Like there's just like, we are really doing ourselves a disservice if we do not have our Google My Business optimized. Absolutely. And again, it's free. Again, it's not sexy and fun and all the, you know, warm fuzzies that we think we want to do with marketing, but it is so critical and so essential. Um, And I am seeing, and this is just from you chatting with my mastermind group and us being super hyper aware of it over the last year, we've really been concentrating with a lot of my members and my coaching clients, the Google, my business results, even like just by optimizing it has been mind blowing. (laughs) I see it every day. So that's why I brought you in here. Really. So let's explain to, let's explain to the listening public. Let's explain to the retailers listening that, you know, why it's like, so it's important because everybody Googles. And I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that um, and explain to us, you know, why it's important to optimize all of those pieces. Yeah. So, I mean, Google, my business is you know, so important because Google loves promoting local business. And that's what really this is about for them is uh, because it's based on where someone's searching from and what they're searching for and how close you are to to them and all those um, key factors when it comes to showing up in Google My Business. Um, But Google gets an 
it, it's n- over 90% of all the searches online. And so we absolutely for a local business need to be there. One very cool feature though, is you can actually connect your Google, my business listing to your Bing local listing, even though Bing, we all are like, Oh, Bing, what do I need to do with that? It does still get a certain number of searches every single month and you can actually connect them and they talk to each other. Bing just like opens its arms and says, please just Google, send us your information. So we still only have to have that one location that we're entering all of this amazing, valuable information on. Um, But it's so important because uh, optimizing it is so important because there are only three listings on the Google search page. And just like uh, on the organic listings where there's only 10, if you're number 11 or 12 and you're on page two, you might as well not even be online. If you're not in the top three on the Google My Business listings in that map section on the organic or on the search page, you might as well not even be on there because people just, they'll find what they need right there. And there are some simple yet unknown steps that are important to get done in order to be fully optimized on Google and and making sure that that's taken care of. And it's the things that people don't necessarily look at. You know, we all know, oh, we should probably have some pictures on there. We should make sure that our information, you know, our contact information is there. But then we, most accounts just kind of leave it at that. Maybe they'll have some reviews. Of course, reviews are, are a huge, a huge factor as well, but they'll get reviews and then they'll just kind of leave it at that. And then every once in a while, you'll see somebody that has 25 reviews show up below somebody that has two reviews. And it's like, I don't get it, Google, what are you doing? Well, there are some actual steps that need to be taken to be optimized. And it just means that that other person that has only two reviews instead of the 25 has done some of these other steps that actually make a really, really big difference in showing up and optimizing your listing on those rankings. Okay, well, let's talk about let's let's get to the meat then. I want I always like to have retailers put you on the spot. I like to have retailers walk away with action items at the end of the podcast. So, what are three things? Can you give us three things that everybody should do? I know there's a lot. Actually, Chris, <laughs> came, Chris came into the inner circle and has done a full masterclass, and we have a full checklist and all of the things to optimize. But if there are three things that I could do, so again to reiterate what Chris is saying, you want to be on page one. Because just like you, you're not probably searching and arrowing over to page two and page three and page four. Just think of your customers, right? So what are three things that we can do to just help us stay over on that page one and be found first? Yep. So the first one is the the one that everybody does, but it still needs to be done is making sure. So when you go into the, the dashboard of Google My Business, there's an info tab. Make sure that is completely filled out. If Google asks the question, answer it. Now, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have um, an answer to all of those things. One of the options is, is this business woman-led? Well, if your business isn't woman-led, then don't, <laughs> don't, 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 you don't answer that one. But make sure that every single section in that information uh, area is 100% filled out. Make sure that you have a good primary category and great secondary category. So, and they're all predefined. You can't create your own. So just look through their Google's list and make sure that you're selecting everything that could potentially apply to you. So that is just, that is the first baseline for Google My Business is that info page. The second thing that I would say is uh, pictures, really great quality pictures, a really good cover photo because the cover photo is what shows up on the listing. So you want to make sure that that is a really good representation of who you are for all of your retail people. Maybe that's taking a really great shot of the store. Um, I always tell people, put your cell phone above your head and take that picture so that it gives a really great shot of, you know, that doesn't just see what's directly in front of you. Stand on a ladder or something so that you can get a really nice picture there. And the key with photos is actually taking the pictures with your cell phone. The reason for that is when you take a picture with your cell phone and you have location services turned on with your camera, which is kind of default for everybody, you have to turn it off if you don't want it. But having it on, what happens is Google or your phone embeds your GPS coordinates into the back of the picture, something none of us ever see. It's nothing that 
we ever care about, anybody really ever cares about, but Google cares about it. And what they'll do is they'll look and see what are the GPS coordinates of this picture. And then they'll look to see what are the GPS coordinates of this location. And they'll know that picture was taken at this location. So that Google's like, that's a valuable picture. They know it's not a stock photo. They know it's not something that, you know, you took at a previous location that you had and it isn't actually representative of where you are today, any of that information. So Google really likes to see, they'll, they'll value those listings those pictures, sorry, uh, much higher than even professional pictures that are taken with a really great camera. Because on just a regular camera, there's no location settings. And so um, Google really values that. Now, thankfully, our cameras or our phones take really great pictures at, today. So, you know, even having good lighting is still is still a valuable thing. Don't take a pic, you know, a picture with your phone in a dark corner of your store because that's not going to show well because there's, there's still the visual aspect of it for the users because it still should be good for them as well but for google to be able to see oh look at all these pictures that are taken at the location and are um are, are actually really really from here um i'm going to actually give you four because i can't just stop at three um but my my next one is reviews and we all know reviews are important that's just kind of a no brainer. But the key with it is that you get current reviews. Some, some people get, uh, you know, 100 reviews. And then they're like, Oh, my gosh, I've got all these reviews. And then they just leave it alone. And they don't ever ask people for reviews ever again. And Google's looks at that. And they're like, great, you've got 100 reviews. But they're from two and three and four and five years ago. But somebody that comes in and they get 10 reviews every single month, Google's like, they're obviously continuing to do good work in their community. They're still continuing to do good work as a, uh, as a business. And so making sure that you're continually getting good reviews, um, whether that's using a review service that helps um, continue to reach out to your clients to get those reviews, or you're just always asking as people are coming up to your cash register and purchasing something, you're handing them a business card and say, hey, would you would you write a review about our store? Obviously, you don't have to tell everybody, but people that are always you know smiling and they're happy and they love, love what you're doing, asking them to write a review for you is such a big thing for, for Google. Google loves it that you're getting reviews on a regular basis, but also people love it too. And then when we, cause it shows this was reviewed, you know, three days ago, two weeks ago, eight years ago. Well, that review from two or three years ago, the, everybody's business changes dramatically right. <laughs> year over year. And so to see a review that was written years ago, just doesn't carry the weight with the individual either, but Google likes those, those recent reviews. I, I didn't mention uh, just, uh, I think it's only been maybe I don't know, time flies, but maybe like six weeks ago, I think that you were in my mastermind group. You came in to chat with us. Um, one of the retailers in my group uh, mentioned, uh, so she started mentioning and asking her customers on a regular basis, you know, don't forget, don't forget to leave us a review on Google. And she also includes it as a sort of footnote on the bottom of her um, regular emails that she has a very good, you know, very good uh, relationship uh, emails that go out uh, on yeah. her newsletters. I know we don't call them newsletters anymore, but you know, her <laughs> weekly, her weekly updates to her customers. She always asks for honest reviews. That's the wording that we always suggest that you yep. use. Please leave us an honest review. And she sends them to the link to the, so sometimes she goes to her Facebook page, but most of the time lately it's been Google. It is phenomenal what has been happening. Cause it, of course people don't, people don't think about it unless you ask them, right? Like I would exactly. leave you a review in a minute, but I didn't think about it and I'm in the business. <laughs> like, you know, so we have to be brave and ask. And I think it, it I, that is such a really, because you kind of look and we think, oh, I already, like you just said, we're poo-pooing. I've done all the things. I have some reviews on there. Everything's fine. Yeah. But current fresh reviews, that's great, great, great advice. Thank you for, that's a really good reminder. Well, and most of the time, the people that are going to just on their own write a review, it's typically negative. It's just how our culture works. And we're not, as a culture, most people aren't just effusive in their praise of businesses. I try to do it and I Me don't too. do a great job yeah. of it. I'll go through, yeah. through phases where I'll visit a business and I'll go on Google and I'll leave my review for them because I, I, 
I know how valuable it is for them, but I don't, I, I I just, I'm thinking about it right now. And it's been months since I've left a good positive review for somebody and I'm going to go do it this afternoon. I'm going to go leave a couple of reviews. Yeah, I know. I feel the same. I feel the same. I'm in the business. I know it's important. And yet I have to like remind myself. So when I see a reminder and I'm reminded of regularly in emails and whatever, like, Hey, if you enjoyed our, if you had a great day today and our, you know, I've seen, I had a restaurant recently send me, you know, a thing and say, you know, if you had a great visit with us, we'd love an honest review. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to leave that review and make it easy yeah. for them. Right. Make it easy. But I agree. Yeah. A, a QR code at the counter is really good too. Direct linking directly, yeah. you know, anyway, just, yeah. yeah. And I agree. Ask your, ask your good customers. You know, we all have those ones that we love, yeah. you know, and that love Absolutely. us. Those are the ones we need to have, you know, reminded of that, but it's a great, great, um, a great reminder. Thank you. That's a great reminder. And I've got one more thing that I think is great for optimizing. I don't want to say four and only, only give you three and that (laughs) is posting. So Google, my business has the ability to allow you to post like a Facebook post and where this comes from is Google used to have something called Google plus for those of you that remember it, that was trying to compete with Facebook for social media and Google realized uh, we can't beat Facebook. It wasn't what they were. It wasn't their core focus. And so it just ended up falling flat, but they kept that posting feature available for Google, my business. And I don't recommend posting every single day or posting multiple times a day, like we do on Facebook and other social media sites, but posting three to four times a week just, and have a great picture with it. Again, take a picture with your cell phone so that it Google has that GPS coordinates built into it. And then just writing something simple about, you know, uh, a section of your store that you've got, you've got a really great display. And as we're especially coming up to the holidays, taking pictures of specialty holiday displays that you've got, or specialty sections that you've got something that's different from uh, other things and just promote people coming to your store. There's two reasons for it. One, it can show up in uh, Google searches when people are searching for, they want Christmas decor, they want you know gifts for kids. Your, your post can actually show up in the Google search results. But the other reason, and to me, probably the most important reason is you're playing Google's game. Google wants to see that you're interacting with their platform. They don't just want to see that you've optimized your site and optimized your listing. It's, it's so important. And don't get me wrong that if you're, if you're not going to post, it's, it's not going to terribly negatively affect you, but if you're optimized and you're posting, Google's going to think that you hung the moon and they're going to really promote your site and really make your listing climb in the rankings. So that's really the, the last thing that I would say, and it doesn't have, don't spend a lot of time on it. It can even be a post that you put on Facebook that you just on Google, my business, you throw a couple of those in every single week. Yeah. Don't spend a lot of time on it, but play their game, be a part of what Google's doing. Right. And so that's important with, I mean, we know that with all social, like all, all algorithm-y things. Absolutely. Like that's what yep. we do with Pinterest. That's what we do with social media. That's what we, you know, we have to play that game. And I, I think that that's really, really important. What you said about, you know, don't spend every day living in this. This is not, I don't want this post to be, oh, great. Wendy and Chris are giving me more things to do, right? We are trying to help you optimize um, and get see the most foot traffic, see the most, you know, the the, the right customers coming to your through your door and make things easier. So if you take some time, just once a week, you know, I actually recommend uh, we do what we call a monthly dashboard on my in my group. And one of the sort of blocks, you know, just to pay attention to is just checking your Google, my, you know, check everything because things go wonky. We all know maps get yep. skewed and things happen. But on a weekly basis, maybe add something, you know, check your reviews or check your, you know, um, your postings. If it's a weekly or biweekly or when you have something really cool to share, like you just said, like a good display or something. So I'm just going to go over the four things that you said. I just want to kind of unpack them a little tiny bit more. So the first yep. part is that we all should do. And again, this isn't meant to give you way more work. Once you do some of these things kind of once and keep it right, your yes. info, uh, you know, your info page and like have every box filled no matter what right and have it filled properly i think that was advice you gave us before was make sure that the address is proper and that the phone number is everything has to be filled out right so and the primary and secondary categories which can be hard for some people but you have to pick something so absolutely what do you want to be you know the second one is your pictures and i love 
absolutely love um, making sure we have pictures, but love using the iPhone or the, you know, you're, you're using your um, cell phone for your location services that has already seen. I have already seen results with some of my retailers with that as well, too. Just a heads up on that um, because yes, it sounds creepy <laughs> <laughs> all the things, right? But it's happening anyway. So do it, you know, use it. So um, that's when, you know, when you're searching a product or a restaurant, I want you to think about how you, the rest of you, like how, how you're like, as a shop owner, when you're out looking for a restaurant or something, we pull up our phone and what do we see? You know, those little restaurant tabs pull up, the little things pull up. That's what we want people to find for you. And then your location services, that's what, that's all helps with this mapping and everything, right? Yep. And when they look at, yeah, so playing Google's game. I love this. Uh, the third part was making sure our reviews are fresh and current and asking for them. So getting those and you do what you need to do to get those. And number four is posting on a regular basis. So that is just, um, and again, like a post just on like what's Facebook. I like looking when I look at retailers, Google, my business pages, um, you know, you, I, I really suggest always having a front of house picture, like what the front of your mm-hmm. store looks like or shop because that people driving by or, you know, just want to make sure that people are not missing you and that kind of thing. Also, I love that the advice that you gave about that, um, represents you. So, when they look at that picture, we want them to know instantly. Um, when they look at those posts, we want them to know instantly what you're all about. That's that whole feeling, right? We want to evoke yep. the emotions and the feelings of what you're all about. So that is great. I mean, that is a great start for everybody. Um, and again, I know we have a full list. If you're an Inner Circle member and you're listening, there's a full giant list of all like from Chris uh, and, a, and a video, a great ma- no, a great masterclass inside our Retailers Inner Circle. Um that's just phenomenal. I thought it was really good. So amazing feedback on that. So um, that's there. If you're an inner circle member, if you're not, you're welcome to join us. But I would also like to just ask a quick question about, um, again, in the optimizing all of these things, we get SEO thrown around. I'm not trying to, I don't want to put you under the bus or anything like this. And I know that's a huge topic and we, we, we should have to have, we should have you back on about that. Um, Talking about SEO, but just In a nutshell, if you can, people get hung up on optimizing, like, what words do I use? What do I say? You know, what, what is SE? Like, can you, is it, is that something you can give us in a little nutshell? Just ease our fears. I will do my best to make it as as, short as possible. It's a big thing. Can we simplify it just really quick? Because I do get that question back. Well, you know, Google My Business should be all optimized with SEO. And then that, then we go down the spider web of, you know. Yeah. So. When it, when SEO is really for your website and how you're optimizing your website and the keywords that you want to use is who you are. You don't want to use keywords that aren't who you are. So if you're, you know, we ran a music school, so we didn't have words about karate or gymnastics <laughs> or dance or anything like that. And it even, you know, because some people try to do stuff like that where they try to, uh, someone's going to search for dance. I want them to, my website to come up because I want them, you know, maybe steal that client, whatever. Let's just, let's just stay with who we are and build, (laughs) you know, build people that are, that are really interested in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's just focus on what you actually do and who you actually are. So making sure, you know, if you've got an online store, you can um, make sure that each one of your products is optimized and that, that takes a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of work. Um, But just really making sure that that's all, um, focused on what you actually do and who you actually are. That, um, when, it, that's, when it comes I love to, that. I just have to interrupt you for a second, but what you do and who you are, it really simplifies it. Can you, can, is it important then to, I know like I'll get you explain a little bit more, but is it important then to worry about SEO words in Google, my business or no, it's just mostly for our websites. So Yes, it is. But there's, there's limited areas that you can do that in. So on your posts, you can make sure that you're talking about, you know, if you're a a toy store that you're always, of course, what else would you be talking about in a post, but making sure that you're talking about toys, and maybe specific toys, and you're talking about Legos, you're talking about, you know, Melissa and Doug, or whatever it is that you you the, the products that you that you sell. Um, there is a section in Google My Business to add a add a fifth one in there about listing out your products. Um, and so making sure that you list out, you know, maybe not necessarily each individual product that you've got, but you know, like the big sections of, of things that you sell in your store. So having those as the keywords in there. Um, 
Google does a really good job of really understanding who you are and you put your website in your Google My Business listing. And so I don't know, and Google will never really tell us, of course, but I'm <laughs> course. guessing that Google, uh, you they see your webs, you know, you put your website link in your Google My Business listing. They look at your website as well to see, oh, who are they? What do they do? Just to get, help them give them a background of when someone is searching for a toy store they're going to want to to get the big picture of who you actually are. And, you know, they typically aren't going to, you know, if you just, even if you say toy store in your listing, but it's not in your, on your website, there's no information about that right, anywhere. Right. It's not going to be uh, something that they're going to, um, you know, show you up, show up, show you won't show up in, in that, that listing. Um, but you know, just making sure that you're really promoting exactly who you are. And like I said, in your posts, use those keywords. That's really important. And then, um, you know, in your products, listing out everything that you sell. So it's really not. So I, I, how I'm hearing this from you and what I've said is like, just say it like it is and not, you know, and, and I know that sounds simplified versions or whatever, but I think we get overwhelmed with this. Oh, I got an SEO. I heard somebody, one of my retailers said the other day, I have to come up with like all these SEO where I'm like, well, you're already doing this. So I guess as long as we're being, you know, thinking about the products and thinking about what we do and who we serve and maybe our big product, like our big, yeah. like you said, Melissa and Doug and the word toys, both of them in the same, you know, kind of context, because a lot of people, a lot of retailers that don't think they understand um, the whole, the way that Google works <laughs> in a very, like, <laughs> very simplified that is like, it's like spider webs, right? Like crawlers and, you know, that this instant thing of when somebody's searching, looking for toys in your town. So, you, you know, you toys and, you know, in Moncton, you know, they're looking for toys in Moncton. Then they, they, the, the, it instantly happens with this spider web, looking at your website, looking at all the things, your face, like everything comes into play. So it is just, you know, want to be consistent on who you are. So that's why really understanding what you want to be known for, I think is really important. Absolutely. Um, and, and Google, you know, not, not all all of the things. I, I regularly joke and say, you know, if you're a jewelry store or a bookstore and all of a sudden you start selling tires, if it doesn't make sense to you, you know, it, it might, that might confuse and stop the Google searches. But um, that's, that is such, thank you for sort of simplifying all that. Yeah. That's and people used to try to trick Google. Yeah. And Google's gotten really smart <laughs> right. with what they do. People uh, years ago used to put words on their website that didn't necessarily mean anything, and but they would make them white or the same color as their background so that they didn't show up to regular viewers. Oh my gosh, really? But Google, <laughs> oh <gosh>. they've <laughs> just trained their computers to know what that looks like. And right. Google can figure that out. You know, they're smart enough. And so they really try to stop people from being underhanded in this way. And so that's right. why I just tell people, be who you are. Just promote what you Love do, it. who you are, what you sell, and it's going to <laughs> it's going to end up working. If you try right. to do things underhanded or sneakily or whatever, Google's going to figure it out. Google's way smarter than the rest of us. Awesome. And so we just need to do what we can do, promote who we are. Like you said, if you're a jewelry store, promote that you sell jewelry. Don't promote anything else. Don't yeah. try to attract other people in in that That's way so this smart google is for people that are looking for what we do not trying right. to sneakily attract other people so smart thank you for simplifying that for us um i know i'm keeping i want to honor your time i think we could talk about this all day i have like a million more questions but oh, yeah. i do appreciate your time so is there anything else you'd like to share with us or any 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 other any other thing that at this time that would you think would be valuable for us? Yeah, I, you know, everything about Google is huge and so important. And just making sure, like, again, like I said, that you're kind of playing their game. And the one last thing that I'll, that I'll throw in about this is um, the way that you list your name, address, and phone number on Google needs to be the same as on your website, as on any other place that you're that you're listing your 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 business on other directory sites like Yelp and things like that. You want to make sure that they're the same as what Google is. Google's like the main hub, and then every other piece needs to needs to match. So making sure that your website, the way that they abbreviate your street or the way that they abbreviate your town name or how they put in, if you have a suite number or anything like that, just make it the same 
everywhere, but use Google as your source. Because when we play things from Google's perspective, Google will look out and be like, oh, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same, everywhere that you look. And then when you go to uh, someday you utilizing Google ads or uh, Google has a shopping option that you can actually list your individual products on. And when they start to see that you're playing with all of their <laughs> all of their toys and you're playing with all of them, they're like, that is a business that I can really get behind is what Google is saying. And they're, they really start benefiting local businesses. I love local yeah. business. I really okay. firmly a hundred percent believe local businesses are the, what drive our, all of our economies is driven by these local businesses that, you know, we all wish that we were the billionaires that they talk about when they talk about business owners, but we're not, we're just raising our families. We're just living our lives um, and going about our day-to-day -day lives. And that's really where our business came from and what uh -huh. we, um, why we started our business and why we call it never alone business services is we are there for the local small businesses that are out there just trying to do their best to get reach one more customer to uh, help one more family to do whatever it is that the service that they provide or the products that they're selling, because we're just trying to do the same thing for our family. And so that's where we come alongside and we just are like, what can we do to help those local small businesses? Because we all do have a finite amount of time and we still want time for our families. We want time for all of our other things in our lives. Work can't take the 80 hours that it really should take uh, every right, single week. Right. Yeah, and so we I need know. to have those people come alongside us. And so that's where we came from. And so that's really what, you know, when you uh, invited us to, to go to your, into your mastermind and to do a training and to come on this podcast, I was so excited because I don't really get to talk to retail owners uh, very, very much. And I just love the opportunity to reach out and to help other people and get as much assistance out there as possible, because we all need that extra hand as we're growing our businesses so totally, yeah i totally i i so i i think <laughs> again i've i've known jen for a while um you know your wife jen um in in what you guys do more so um for the same values i have the same i always often say you know we're just one independent business helping other independent like I, i'm like you i regularly say our board of directors is sitting at our kitchen table right like you know <laughs> we don't have these like Tesla driving, you know what I mean? Like, well, yep. okay, we could drive a Tesla, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we, we just don't have these, the big boardrooms and we're independent. We're just so any support we can get with other people that align with us, which I know um, you guys do as well too. So I want to thank you so much for being here today. Um, it's so helpful. And I, you know, I, I think we're going to have to have you back on for another series. We'll have to get into deeper, some other things too. Well, you know what? We could have had a whole conversation about tech and the overwhelm, and I know you help with that. So we will be sharing all of your location where people can find you at Never Alone Business Services on our podcast notes. Um, in uh, you know, and I really want to encourage people. Uh, I know that some of my retailers work with you, and um, hopefully, you know, can you can help them with through some of this stuff that we want to, yeah. you're, you're a good who <laughs> I always say, no, the who, not how, you know, we don't always have to learn all the things, but we do have to understand it before we hire a who is what I always say. Absolutely. So I know you guys help people along with their journey yeah. as well. Just too, hiring so. someone to do something and you don't know what they're doing is very scary. So yeah. absolutely. I'm, 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 we try to be as transparent as possible when it comes yeah. to what we do for our clients and giving them the reports and telling them exactly what we're doing, because I don't, I've worked with those companies that just kind of work in the background and I take over. I, yeah. I don't know what you're doing in it. And then I end up not wanting to work with them long term. Yeah. And our goal is to develop long term relationships with the businesses that we work with. And we do that by making sure that they're aware of what we're doing and providing, you know, as great of the customer services they're providing for their customers, we want to provide the same thing to them. So that's really our goal. And, our, you know, everything that we're trying to do is to just come alongside and be a support person for these businesses. Yeah, you guys do a great job at it. So thank you for that. I always wrap up my podcast by asking if there's a favorite mantra or quote or advice or something that somebody maybe shared with you or that you love to share with other people that you can leave us with. Uh, do you have anything that I might put yeah. you on the spot? 
So it's it's actually yeah. one from my wife and who's, you know, really a 50-50 business partner, yeah. but I'm more the nerd tech person. So I, I tend to do a lot of these trainings and, and podcasts and things like that. But it the, the saying is do what you can with what you have where you are. What you can do, do it. And then don't stress out about the stuff that's outside of what you can do. That doesn't mean that you can't, you know, I, we, we hire landscapers at our house and people to mow the lawn and to plow our snow and everything. Cause that's not who I am, but I'm able to do the things that I can do and where, where I am with the, with the tools that I have around me. And that's where I spend my energy and where, what I focus on and what I think is going to end up helping all of us is to do what we can with what we have around us and where we're actually, where we are. That's such a great, such a great way to end. And again, even setting up your Google My Business, my friends, just do what you can. Now that you have this list, you know what you can do. You have the tools now. So do what you can with what you have. That's a beautiful, uh, beautiful saying. Thank you so much, Chris. We will be sure to share all of your information, how to reach uh, Chris uh, at Never Alone Business Services. Thank you. Thank you, my friend, uh, for being on here today with us. Absolutely. So glad to be a part. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week. 